Hey there guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Double Cube and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be learning to create uh, a thumbnail in Photoshop and it's not going to be one of my usual design related tutorials but this is more of a universal tutorial because you know this could be like uh, you know for tech related videos, games, uh, apps, beauty tips, um, uh, you know gadgets uh, anything you know which involves uh, a lot of uh, information in the video so uh, I've seen these kind of thumbnails you know quite rare uh, on YouTube and you know I thought teaching you guys on how to create this so if you guys are probably interested in making like the top five games or top five gadgets or you know the top five top four top three whatever it is um, so I think this is uh, you know a pretty cool thumbnail that you guys can use um, so uh, if you guys want the project file for this, I'm going to give that for free in the description so you guys can definitely use it. And if you guys want to learn how to create it and maybe give it a little bit of, of you know, your own personal touch, then you guys can feel free to watch the video. Uh, before we start on, uh, I would just like it if you guys could take a moment to like the video and also subscribe to my channel because it helps me a lot and supports my channel. Uh, so yeah, so let's get started. So here I am in Photoshop and as you can see, you're seeing something pretty different. You're seeing the Iron Fist. So so, uh, you know, I thought, you know, uh, you know, making with the four superheroes, the defenders and making this, creating the same thumbnail for that. Uh, so instead of rather than using tech gadgets or something else, because I really like this. So as, I have, so as you can see, I have four pictures here. So this is the Iron Fist, this is Luke Cage, this is Jessica Jones, and this is Daredevil. Four superheroes, they're called the defenders. If you guys don't know about that, you guys don't need to know about that if you don't want to. Anyways, so, um, so when you open up Photoshop, you know, create a blank document. So you want to go to file and click on new. And uh, the size you want to use is 1920 by 1080 for the height and the weight and, and the width, sorry, what the hell am I saying? The width is 1920 and height is 1080, resolution 72 and whatever it is. Now you, you can choose a 1280p resolution thumbnail, but I would obviously suggest a higher resolution. And once you go ahead, click on OK and you have a new document. So we have four different layers like so. So the first thing we want to do is set up our guides. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl R on my keyboard. It's going to give me the rulers or you can go to view and click on rulers, Ctrl R. And that's going to give us this rulers. Now, what you want to do is you want to click over here, which is the corner. And, you know, you know, you want to bring it right at the corner of your project, uh, the project panel. So here, as you can see, it fits it exactly at zero. And, you know, it goes on one, two, three, four, five, twenty six. Now, if you come over here, I can see that this is almost at, I think, twenty six point five. Uh, I think more than a little bit of 26.5, uh, but it's fine. I think 26.5 is the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my calculator and here I'm going to type in uh, 26.5 uh, and let's actually keep it at 26. We can manually edit that later and I'm going to divide this by four, which is going to give me 6.5. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to go to window and uh, sorry, view and choose new guide and I'm going to type in 6.5. Five. And I'm going to click on OK and that's going to snap a ruler over here uh, for me. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and click on view and choose new guide again. And so we're going to do 6.5 plus 6.5 that is 13. Click on OK. That's going to give us another one at 13. Let's go to view. Let's choose new guide. We're going to choose uh, 13 plus 6.6.5. That's going to give us 19.5. And that's going to give us another ruler and you know, we have another set over here. So what we want to do now is press Ctrl R to get rid of the ruler and create a new layer. And I'm going to come here to the marquee tool over here, which is the rectangular marquee tool and just drag a selection. But before we do that, you want to go to view and choose. You have snap turned on and snap to guides, rulers and document bounds everything. And then we'll go ahead and just create a, you know, like a, you know, like a boundary. And as you can see, it helps you to snap right the rulers. And then what you want to do is make sure you're in the uh, shape tool this time. You're going to right click, I'm sorry, another shape tool. You want to click on the marquee tool again, right click, and you want to choose a uh, fill. And let's just fill it up with any color we want. So let's choose uh, probably 50% gray and click on OK. And that's going to fill it up with that. Let's press Ctrl D to deselect. And then what we do, you want to duplicate this a couple of times. So let's duplicate this four times. So press Ctrl J three times with this layer selected. So one, two, three. And I'm going to quickly name these layers. Uh, so this is going to be one, this is going to be two oops uh, oops uh, two uh, there's three and this is four and uh, this is again gonna be one I'm gonna call this one place 
So this is looking good. So now let's just go ahead and select the second one and we can just move this over to the side. Make sure you're holding down the shift key so it snaps proportionately. So there we go. And uh, let's choose the third one and move this over to this side and choose the fourth one. And we can move it over to this side. Now, as you can see, we're gonna have a little bit of gap over here. So the best way to fix it, we're gonna select everything, press control T, and I'm gonna go ahead and just move all of this. So now all of them are equally aligned. Click on okay. We can get rid of those rulers by going to view and choose uh, show rulers, show guides, or you can press the control and the semicolon key. Now, here is what we have. Now, um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just arrange them in the proper order. So I'm gonna press, I'm gonna move them like so, right? Yeah, and now what I'm gonna do is actually, I wanna keep the picture on top and the placeholder on the bottom, right? So now, so now we can see only this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this one and uh, right click and choose create clipping mask. So now as you can see, this is what we actually get, right? So. So what actually has happened is this picture is being clipped on only to this part of the shape. Now let's do the same thing. I'll right click and choose create clipping mask. If you guys want the shortcut, the shortcut is uh, hold down the alt key and come in between these two layers. You're gonna get this arrow mark in the box. Just click, it's gonna wrap that up and we can do the same thing over here. And uh, that's looking good. Now let's just go ahead and place these properly. I don't know why this is 20% opacity. Anyways, okay. So the first one, you just so if you want to move it, all you got to do is move the whole image. So we're gonna move this over here. Wow, this looks super cool, right? And the second one is over here. We can keep this guy's, you know, sort of like so. This guy's face, uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, we can keep her over here. And Daredevil, we can move him over to the side. Wow, this looks crazy. This looks super cool. All right, looking great. All right, so once we have all this, we can actually go select all of this, right click and choose a uh, group, 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 group. There's a group, okay, I don't know, I don't see the group option, but press Control G to create it. And we can rename this to be uh, the images. I have no idea, let's just name it. All right, so next thing we wanna do is, let's go ahead and grab the line tool. So we have the line tool like so. And uh, we can get rid of the stroke, we don't need the stroke. We can just set the weight. So probably I'm gonna set it to four. We can probably change that later. I'm gonna set the fill to a black color. Now this color again depends upon whatever color you want to choose. So it's up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and just come over here and hold down shift and create a you know line like so. And uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a different color. So uh, I'm gonna probably go with red or an orange color. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a dark blue color. I have no idea, let's go with the red color. All right, yeah, red looks good. I'm gonna set the weight of this to 10 probably. So let's select it and uh, why is it not happening? Let's, okay, let's draw one under the line, it doesn't matter. All right, we can delete the shape. Whoops, we can delete the shape. And let's just take this and move it over to the side. To be honest, I'm gonna go set this to a white color because I think white is universal and real, yeah, white is good. Oops, sorry about that. All right, now let's duplicate this uh, three times. So let's press Control J and then hold press V on your keyboard to get the move tool. And let's just mo move this over to the side. So let's just move it over to the side over here. All right, and press Control J once again, and we can move it over here. And uh, that is looking really cool. Now, again, you guys can go ahead and change the width of this, but I think I'm gonna keep it like so. I mean, it's fine for me. Now comes the best fun part. I'm gonna actually gonna do is I'm gonna create the shape layers and press Control G to group them and I'm gonna call these lines and I'm gonna put this inside the image images button and make sure that this is on top of everything because we want it to be on top of everything. Now you can obviously have your thumbnail like showing like so or else you can keep it slant. So to slant what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the lines and I'm gonna go and select all of these placeholders that I have, the the back the back plate, not the images itself. And then press Control T on your keyboard, it's gonna give us a selection, right click and choose perspective. And then what you wanna do is you wanna click on the center, uh, click on, you know, hover over the center anchor point, and then just move it over to the side and give it whatever inclination that you want. Now, I think this inclination is fine, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's too much, maybe like so, and click on enter to move it. And then we have to kind of select all of this and move them over to the side. Now, uh, we're gonna move this over to the right side, completely right side, oh, you may, you hold, hold on shift when you're doing that. 
So we're gonna move it over completely to the right side. So this is completely covered. And then you press Control T and we're gonna move all these over to the other side so that the bottom part of this is covered. Click on OK. And we have something that looks like this. Now obviously we have to move the images again. So uh, like so. Jessica Jones, I need to see a face. And Daredevil, whoops, more to the side. Yeah, that looks perfect. That is looking super cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, close all this up so we have our first images set over here. All right, so once we have this, what we can actually do is add in a nice, you know, like a border. So what you wanna do now is, now since your dimensions is 1920 by 1080, you wanna go ahead and click on the marquee tool. You wanna come over here to the size and choose a fixed size. So once we have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer and just throw in any random color. So you can just press Alt Delete on your keyboard, just gonna throw in a random color. Now I'm gonna come here to the marquee tool and I'm gonna change my width and the height parameters and make sure that your style is set to fixed size. So on the width, I'm gonna set it to 1980, which is 30 pixels less than uh, my width of the entire document, which is 1920. And I'm gonna reduce 30 pixels again on the height, which is gonna give me to you know 1050 so 1080p minus uh 30 pixels is 1050 and i'm going to come here almost to the corner and just click over here which is going to give me this nice selection and then what i want to do is i'm going to create a new layer on top of this and i'm going to fill it up with a different color so i'm going to press Control delete which is going to fill it to my background color um and uh, yeah, I'm gonna press Control D to deselect. And then with this black layer selected, I'm gonna press Control A and uh, come over to the Move tool and align this vertically and horizontal so it's sitting straight in the dead center of the document. Press Control D to deselect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Control and hold on Control and click on this thumbnail icon, which is gonna create a selection around the black. And I'm gonna come and click on this white layer. I'm gonna hit Delete. Now what actually is happening is if I had the blue layer, if I had the black layer and press Ctrl delete, we see we have this nice cool border around the entire, uh, you know, the entire scene, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, and what we're going to do is you can do a lot of things with this actually. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to deal with it. Now you can obviously go and set the blending mode of this to overlay, which is going to create this nice overlay effect around the dark and the light areas. Or you can go and uh, double click on this and click on the drop shadow and that's going to give us a drop shadow we can probably set the opacity to 100 set the angle down to zero and so we can increase the size so now you can see that here in the corners we're going to create this nice you know like a really cool um drop shadow effect like so I'm, so if you can see here on the top which is looking really good we can also go and set the blending mode of this to overlay let's see how that looks it looks way better now we have this nice you know d differentiation uh, can make a copy to make it more strong yeah that's up to you a lot of things you can do with this so i'm going to keep it uh, probably like this for now uh so let me just go ahead and rename this to uh border one and you'll go here and choose this to border two obviously you guys can download the project file and do whatever you want with it i'm going to delete this layer that we do not want now all right, so the next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. So let's go to the marquee tool and let's actually go and choose a shape tool. Uh, so let's go and choose the rectangle tool. Let's create a random, you know, like a nice shape like so and uh, fill it up with whatever color you want over here and uh, center it by pressing Control A and center it vertically and horizontally. Press Control D to deselect and we have something that looks like this. Um, so for this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a different color. So with the shape tool selected, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a, you know, like a nice dark orange color. So I'm gonna come over here and come into the orange color and choose this nice orange brown color. Yeah, there's a kind of, there's a particular reason I'm choosing this. And we're gonna click on okay, a little bit more darker. There we go. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on this. We're gonna create a stroke. And then on the stroke, we want to set the position to inside and we're going to increase the size to probably around 10. And here on the color, I'm going to choose this to a yellow orange color, like so. Wow, this is looking really cool. All right, and click on OK. And we can also go ahead and add in a drop shadow to this, but you know, that's up to you guys. Um, and then I'm going to press T on my keyboard to get the text tool. I'm going to type in, uh, let's say, the defenders, D F E N D E R S. Uh, we can choose a nice font. I'm just using a random font. And uh, we can go ahead and just space this out. So let's go ahead and space this out. Yeah, the defenders. We can set the alignment to center. 
all right and again align this horizontally and center and we have something that looks like this it's pretty cool and the best part is what we want to do is we want to select this rectangle and reduce down the opacity of this to something like 30 percent or maybe that's too much maybe we set it to 60 percent so we so we have a little definition and we can actually see the background a little bit you don't have to delete it out too much but that's up to you and uh, the last thing we want to do is let's go ahead and on top of everything let me just call this the title box all right all right so once you have something like this we can go ahead and add a little bit of finishing touches so we can come over here and choose the uh with a photo filter now depending on the color screen you're going for we can choose the color i'm going to go for probably a blue color so you can see that this gives us a nice uh, you know like a, a blue color uh let's go and increase the density of this to you know like probably like 50 uh let's go to warm whatever color scheme you're going for i think orange yellow looks crazy the yellow looks amazing green cyan magenta sepia a lot of cool colors deep yellow i'm gonna go with deep yellow for this one and go ahead and click on okay now we have something that looks like this which is an amazing insane looking thumbnail so that is pretty much it for this tutorial guys thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys really enjoyed it if you did feel free to mention that in the comment sections down below if you have any questions or requests you can always contact me on my social media links and i'll see you guys in my next video so till then take care and bye bye